There's a really cool game popping off right now, which is called Blade Ball, and I really love the mechanics of the game, so I decided to challenge myself to see if I could recreate it in less than 10 minutes. What do you guys think? Go ahead and leave your predictions in the comments, and let's see if we can do it, okay? Like the video, subscribe, and let's go. Okay, I didn't really want to start from scratch, so I decided to create a couple assets. Let's go through them. So we have a little arena, uh, these yellow squares are spawns, we have our ball of course, inside our ball we have a hit sound for when we hit the ball, uh, we have this attachment with uh, particles inside, uh, let me show you, there we go, so that's the particles that are gonna show when you hit the ball, uh, we have this reset part, this is where our ball is gonna reset whenever it kills somebody, and we have a sword, so we can do the little, like, sword and anim hit animation thing. And a couple of sounds. So that's all we have. Let's get right into it. First thing I want to do, I want to take care of the sword animations. So let's go ahead and put this classic sword inside our starter pack. And then inside our classic sword, we're going to go ahead and insert the script. This is going to be our... Oh my god, sword script, there we go, and then, okay, let's get scripting, I'll try to do it as fast as I can, so I might not explain something, but first of all, we're gonna need a debound, there we go, and when the player equips the sword, we wanna do sound, make it a little bit cooler, so yeah, we're gonna play the sound, when the player equips the swords, and then when the sword is activated, which means the player clicked, on the with the sword equipped, we're gonna use our debound slash debound. We're gonna set it to true, and then at the end, we're gonna set it to false. So now that we have a debound, we can work with our event. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get the player, which is game the players. We get a player from Parker script the parent the parent because this is gonna be inside our our tool. And now we do player, character, humanoid, oh, uh, humanoid, load animation, the animation I previously made, which is called slash, and it's right here, and we're gonna play it, so this is gonna play our slash animation, and then we also wanna do the sword slash sound, which is called sword slash, there we go, play, and then we're gonna need to do the hard part, which is creating a hitbox. Uh, which is gonna be instance new part. There you go. A hitbox is gonna be inside our player character, and then hitbox name is gonna be short hitbox. Then we're gonna set the size of our hitbox to um, maybe 20, 20, 20. There we go. And we're gonna set the color of our hitbox. We're not gonna be able to see it later on, but. For testing, it's gonna be good to see it, so let's just make it red. And then, uh, transparency, make it can collide equal false, and just to make sure it doesn't uh, interfere with the physics, let's set it to master. There we go. So now we're gonna set the hitbox C frame to the player character primary part C frame, so it's in the middle part of the player. We're gonna weld it, so we're gonna do instance new weld constraints. Well, parent is gonna be our hitbox, and well, part zero is gonna be hitbox again. Well, part one is gonna be a player character primary part. There we go. Then we're gonna wait five seconds. I mean, 0.5 seconds, and we're gonna destroy the hitbox. And then we're gonna wait another five seconds, another 0.5 seconds, and yeah, set the slash debounce to false. Okay, let's test it real, real quick, just to make sure our sword works. Um, okay, yeah, it's working, perfect. So we have a hitbox, and this is how we're gonna detect the hit with the ball. So let's work in the ball now. We probably don't have much time left. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and work in the ball. So we're gonna go to our ball. We're gonna create a script inside the ball. Script. This is gonna be our ball script. There we go. And then we start scripting. So local ball equal script.parent, just to make it easier. 
We're gonna need a body velocity for this, which is gonna take care of the moving of our ball. So body velocity, and then body velocity the parent is gonna be the ball, and we're gonna set the body velocity max force to vector three dot mu mat dot huge mat dot huge mat dot huge. There we go. So we're also gonna need to hit the bounce for the ball. So let's call this ball hit the bounce equals false. Uh -oh. We're gonna need a current target. So current target player, which is where, which is the player towards our ball is gonna be moving. And we're gonna need the ball speed because we're gonna be changing the speed of the ball and we're gonna set this to 25 to start with. Okay, so first when the ball is touched, ball touch connect function hit, there we go. We're gonna do current target player and ball hit bounce equal false and so if we have a current player and the ball hit the bounce is equal to false we're gonna set the ball hit the bounce to true and then we're gonna set it to false as afterwards and we're gonna check if what the ball hit is the short hitbox and else if the name of the part that the ball, that the ball hit is the current target player name then do something else, okay? So we're gonna need to do a function which is gonna be the choose target function. Just sorry, just target, there we go. We're gonna get the players. Default game dot players dot the players. And if the number of players is less than one, then we want it to return new target player. And we're gonna check to choose a player. So for this, we're gonna do new target player equal player um, mat mat random one from the number of players. So we want the player to be different every time. So we're gonna do if not new target player character then new target player equal new. Okay, this is just so the player character is actually there. And then we're gonna do test wave point one. There we go. So yeah, we're gonna repeat until we find a player that is not equal to our current player, right? And then if it is not, we're gonna set our current player to the new target player. Okay, I think this works. And then we're gonna, if if the, uh, if the ball hits, hits the sword hitbox, we're gonna change it to choose a different target, right? We're gonna do ball hit sound play and we're gonna do attachment sparkle mid so this this is just for the effect of the hit and then we're gonna also change the speed to make the ball faster every time a player takes it right so we're gonna make it plus five to make it faster okay we got those work hit bucks, uh part done but what if the ball hits the player so we're gonna change the name sorry we're gonna change the, the health of the player hit the parent that humanoid, humanoid health equals zero, and we're gonna need to create another function for this, which is gonna be the reset ball because we want the ball to reset when it hits the player. And we're gonna do ball dot c frame equal. We're gonna use our reset part for this. Reset part dot c frame ball is gonna be anchored just to give the player some time. We're gonna also reset the speed, which is ball speed, and we're gonna wait. Five seconds or three. We're gonna encore the ball equal false. We're gonna set the network owner to nil just so the the ball doesn't lag. And we're gonna set the current target player to nil. There we go. There we go. Okay, so we got. The, we're gonna reset the ball here, and that should be it for when the ball is touched. But we still need to make the ball move. So we're gonna go ahead and create our loop, which is gonna be a while to do. And we're gonna wait point 0.1 just to make sure it doesn't break. And if current player, current target player, and current target player dot character, then we're gonna make it move towards that current player. So it's gonna be body velocity equal to current target player dot character dot primary part dot position minus ball dot position unit times the ball speed. So this is gonna set the velocity of our ball. And if there is no if there's not a current character, then we're gonna choose the target. And this should actually take care of everything. Oh my God, let's go ahead and test it, okay? Oh my God, I think we made it. Okay, so we're testing it in a local server of two players and 
as you can see it's working perfectly oh my god i think this is the fastest i've ever made something like this which is pretty amazing i love how it turned out and oh my god it can actually be played as you can see the player dies and everything and oh my god okay I think I, I did a really great job with this. I really love the result. I think it's really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys are able to make this yourself. If you want, go ahead and leave in the comments if you want me to leave a link to, to this kit in the description so you guys can use it and I'll do it. But you gotta subscribe, you gotta leave a comment so I know. And well, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if you want me to create more like different games in like a small amount of time So I can do it. I think it's really fun Don't forget to like the video to subscribe and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Okay. Peace